Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. So just a quick update on what we've got in the workshop at the moment. We've had a couple of couple of new engines come in actually, which we really could have done with. So this here is a BMW N55, is it? I think, something like that. <laughs> um, he basically bought the engine in on the stand there with the crank in it, um, really just to see if we could strip out the crank and see if we could salvage the big end. Um, but just by looking at it, that is not going to be salvageable. Um, these six cylinders here, when they've knocked an end out like that, they are US, to be honest with you. Um, first of all, the journal, I mean, a lot of these people look at the journal and think, oh, it's not too bad because it's not really black around here, but that is just knackered. Um, so that's probably going to be about half a mil down, but even if it's not and it's grindable, the crank's going to be bent. Um, and these days, like we said before, we just don't, we don't get involved with straightening cranks anymore. It's not worth it. So he's gone off to source another crank. As soon as that arrives, we're going to get this all stripped here. It's going to use this block. So we're just going to measure the bores. Um, we're not building it. Um, if they're okay, we'll give them a list of bits to get, like gaskets and what have you. And um, we'll probably stick the crank in the block, but we'll let him put the pistons and what have you down the holes. I thought, to be honest, we had another engine or engine bits turn up here today, but fortunately, as you can see, that's for Bob Dove. He sometimes has a pallet full of stuff delivered here and or to here and from here because I think it's a bit of a nightmare to get up his drive. So that one's for him. Um, so fortunately, because we've got enough to do. Although saying that, we have got a V8, 4 litre V8 Range Rover, I think, on the way. And we've also got another Cosworth engine on the way. Although it's been stripped, um, I think he wants the top hat ductile line liners in it. He wants me to supply rods and a crank and what have you, because I don't think he's got anything to go with the 200 block. And um, yeah, should ex be expecting that in the next couple of days. So nice bunch of machining work to be done on that, really. Right, people, thumbnail and title. So we have an old warranty seeking customer that strikes again. So with reference, just give you a little bit of a um a recap on what it's all about reference the a video i did quite a while ago actually probably towards the beginning of the year i did one on a guy that um got in touch with us via email wanting a warranty on his engine that he hadn't even got in the vehicle yet although about six i think it was about six weeks to two months had passed by and he he complained of a severe oil leak at the back of the engine well it turns out um he was claiming for a rear main seal when he actually sent video evidence um, it turns out that the engine was not even in the vehicle yet although he had filled it full of oil and then persisted in taking one of the flywheel bolts that go into the a through hole into the crank um, he removed one of the bolts and the oil was coming out of the bolt and he sent me a sort of handful of videos showing me how the oil was pouring out of the bolt hole that he removed the bolt from yeah that one so we basically got back to him on that and stated that obviously under our terms and condition and proper, you know, under normal warranty procedures, get the engine back to us. If, you know, if you think there's anything wrong with it, get the engine back to us as you received it. We will continue to uh, strip the engine and, you know, see what the problem is. If it was anything to do with us, we'll rectify it, of course. Um, if not, then you will be charged for the the hours involved in, you know, stripping it and what have you. It didn't get back to us in the end. It all sort of blew over, didn't hear anything more. So we thought at the time, I think what it was, we, we got the general gist that he was trying to get his money back, really. He didn't want the engine repaired. He wanted his money back. It would it had sort of run away with him. He'd spent quite a lot of money. Um, and he was just trying to get his money back. So, yeah, we didn't hear any more until the 1st of May, I think it was the 1st of May or the 4th of May, something like that. We got another email off him saying that he's got a Rackley engine, um, it's smoking, etc. And um, what are we going to do about it? So I sent him an email again, a little bit like the first email, um, saying, you know, we need the engine back, blah de blah at this stage, you know, if it's smoking, we could be injected, anything like that. So 
he sent me certification that the injectors were renewed, blah de blah. Um, but again, nothing. So we sort of we assumed that at that point he was sort of trying it on again. Otherwise, he'd have bought the engine back. Anyway, two months later, so this is sort of last week now, we get another email from him with quite surprisingly, yet yeah, he hasn't bought the engine back, um, but he sent an engineer's report, an official engineer's report via email saying, let me know your thoughts on it. And the report went something like, uh, they, when they turned up, the engine was complete, although the rocker cover was off, and didn't look like they've get, got in amongst the engine too much, but you know, it, the rocker covers come off. Um, it looks like they've, they've got photographs of some sort of damage to the rockers and the rocker um, carrier and what have you, which is normally, we've only ever seen that when it's it's had a clang up with the chain or something's happened or been over revved, you know, what, something like that. But until we, you know, get it, we, we, we're not gonna know until we get the timing chain cover off. So they've sort of wrote, wrote a report saying that one of the head bolts has, looks like it's come loose, worked its way up into the camshaft and that's what's caused all this damage. That's their opinion. Um, at this stage, I'm not quite sure how they could come up with that. You know, it could have been, it could have been the other way around, really. Um, I don't ever remember in the whole time I've been here a head bolt just coming loose. They just don't do that. Um, so at this stage, I've I've replied to that saying again, refer to my email from um, the beginning of May. We need to see the engine. I haven't heard anything since again. So, a bit of a strange one, guys. I I'm suspecting we've had this before where they just do not want to send the engine back to us. You know, I don't, I suppose he's, it really is sort of pointing now towards him sort of wanting his money back rather than us repairing it. Um, and he's sort of going through the court action. But the way I see it is, you know, if it's if it's under warranty, we really should have the right to, to have the engine back, strip it and see what's gone on, if there's any problems, if any, you know. Um, so at this stage, we're not even 100% certain whether it's the same engine, I don't know. Yeah, really odd, really. How he won't, how they, how they, how he wouldn't sort of bring it back. Um, don't know. What do you think, guys? Bit of an odd one, that really. Comment down below on what you think and um, any of your suggestions on the way we should deal with that. And uh, I think the next stage may be a, a solicitor, something like that. But yeah, quite odd and very stressful. You know, things like that. I mean, if I, if, as I say, if, if I wanted the engine fixed and or or i'd got something that was under warranty first thing i'd do is take it back it's the way it works but yeah strange really right guys so what i'm doing here is i fitted the small end bushes these are the ones that paul dove pushed out last week and the new ones have turned up i get these from burton power to be honest with you just as cheap as anywhere else um, and i know they're decent quality so what you've got to do first of all when you push them in you've got to make sure that the oil hole at the top there matches the oil hole around the back of the rod so that's the first thing and then you've obviously got to make sure that they they do sit very slightly lower than the outside of the rod here you've got to make sure that's the same on both sides so once we've done that you can see i've done these three here um but we've got this honing tool i'm sure i've showed you this before basically this tool has got fine honing stone in one end um, it's got like a tapered feed here and when you wind this thing this gauge in it pushes that bar out which then pushes the stone out and puts a cut on it so I don't tend to take any notice of the the digits on here um, I just do it by feel really and um, so I'm halfway through doing this rod so what you do You've got to stop here. This stops the rod from spinning around, so it's just a rest, really. You've got to make sure that the coolant's on there. That's just a honing oil. So when you put it on, you put it on so it's almost a little bit slack. And then down the bottom here, you've got a pedal, which starts the wheel. And that's belt-driven on the back. So that basically, that pedal activates a bit of a clutch. Um, and just the harder you press it, faster it spins, a bit like an old sewing machine really. So what we do, we just move the rod back and forth, like that. 
and every now and again we've got a pin here this is the Cosworth pin we try it in the, the hole and you keep turning the rod round you can put a half a turn cut on there forwards and backwards maybe three or four times and then you can you can normally feel when the the pin starts to go in there it's it's hard to explain on video really but it's just a case of feel of these as i say we just um frequently just turn the rod around see that's starting to go in there now you can it's just starting to pinch that pin so we just put another half a half a turn cut on there and once you get to this stage you just go back, backwards and forwards sort of see that's almost in there but it's just pinching it so what we do is just turn the rod do another up and down a couple of times See, that's gone in there, but it's a little bit tight. So one more sort of turn. Again, like normal. It's a little bit tricky with one hand. And there we go. So that's what we're aiming for. Nice slide fit, but almost you can, you just turn it up and it sort of holds its own weight. So that is absolutely perfect done all of those now we're going to give them a wash and they are ready to go back to pj motorsport monday morning and i've had dave from dp motorsport turn up and i've let him talk me into doing a couple of six long stud jobs on the cosworth blocks while he waits he loves waiting does dave and also he's sprung upon me Vacuum some valves in the cylinder head that he's had welded up. Quite an impressive job, actually. I'll show you in a minute. Um, and also, I've got to stick some valve pockets and some pistons and just take the usual sort of 10th valve off the top of the pistons. So, that's my mission for today. As you can see, this is the first block. Uh, we've done the... We've done one of the outer six and the two inner six. Now, the two inner six, essentially before, we don't have to put the 17 mil... Um, o-ring groove in the top because it's not a through hole this is all separate to the water jacket as opposed to these four which are not so yeah just going to crack on with this right so dave pritchard's gone now um done all these bits and bobs <laughs> always feel a little bit pressured when um people are watching over your shoulder but i don't mind for dave i suppose comment down below let me know what you think on that little scenario that's going on Thanks for watching. We'll see you in another video. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, and we'll see you again. Take care.